What's up guys? Last year, I think it was last year, I replaced a section of fence and I had some cedar fence pickets left over. Uh, these are six inches long and they cost three fifty each. And I'm gonna show you how to make a birdhouse out of cedar fence posts. Pick it. Uh, I'll have the dimensions and plans on my website in the link down below. Since the wood is very rough, I'm going to sand the entire board down with 220 grit sandpaper before I do any cutting. I've also made a couple, a couple more of these, and you could make a light pass through the planer if you want, but uh, the board's already thin enough as it is, so it doesn't take too long to sand. You might as well just do that. It's all sanded. Now we're going to cut it up and make sure you mark all the pieces as you go. Right, here are all the cut pieces mocked up. I'm gonna take this gonna take this top off. Now you're gonna glue up the front, the back, the bottom, and one side. And the reason is because the other side that you're not gluing is going to tilt open like a little flap. So I've got the house part glued together. Uh, you'll notice the sides are cut lower than the, the back and the front, and the back is cut lower than the front to angle the roof. Um, you could hey, you could cut the top parts of the roof at maybe like a five degree angle, but it's it's really not going to matter if you just use enough enough glue, and then I would just give it a couple nails and it should hold just fine. I haven't had any problems. Um, and these, these gaps are just to allow for airflow. And we'll let this dry. And oh, the reason I'm not attaching the roof yet is um, I do that last, because sometimes I've painted the roof a different color um, and it makes it easier to attach the metal rods that I use to uh, allow the, open, the side to hinge open. Alright, so the glue is dried, and I've got the side that's not glued in in place. And I'm gonna I'm gonna clamp it. I'm gonna drill a 3 inch hole on either side, and then we're gonna insert this metal rod into each hole. The hole is gonna go through the back, the front, and the side, so the side will be able to rotate around the rod, and it'll be like a hinge.
Now to add a bit of detail, I'm going to cut up these last pieces of the board into one inch strips and make them into sort of like a mid-century modern pattern on the front and possibly add some, some color to it. So I've got the pattern that I want for the front of the birdhouse and I have these colored blocks from a different birdhouse that I've been playing around with to see if I want to place them and where I want to place them. Uh, I'm going to cut the, cut the overhang parts off and then see how it looks and play around with these blocks a little more. Before I drill out this hole, uh, I'm going to mark out where I want the hole, but I'm going to put this portal, birdhouse portal protector uh, around the outside so that squirrels and other things can't like gnaw on the, gnaw on the wood to make the hole bigger and get inside. Um, so I have this marked out where I want to drill, and then I put in two more nails just to kind of reinforce this piece uh, so it doesn't split off or come unglued and we're going to drill this out with one and a half inch diameter forcer bit. To mount this birdhouse you can either attach it to a pole from the bottom or I'm going to use these uh, metal French cleats to attach to the fence. I just screw on, screw under the fence, screw under the birdhouse, and slide each other. Well, actually it'll be more this way. One thing to note is that it's very important you use stainless steel screws or another kind of screw that can be used outside. And the side will attach to the fence and slide it on like that. <laughs> 